Hi everybody. Uh, it's wet and windy here in western Washington and I haven't been able to fish much lately. So I'm starting to look forward to the spring and I thought I'd tie one of the patterns I'll be using when the chum salmon fry start emerging onto the beaches and hopefully the cutthroat will be right there behind feeding on them. So one of the most reliable patterns in this context is this one, the Keta Rose. The Keta part of the name is from the Latin name of the chum salmon on Carincus Keta. And the rose part is from the creator of the pattern, Doug Rose, who was a fishing writer and guide on the Olympic Peninsula, who sadly passed away a few years ago. This doesn't look like a particularly difficult or complicated fly, but it's quite tricky to tie correctly because it has some materials which are a bit hard to handle. But I'm going to show you how I do them and try and make the job as easy as possible. Now the hook I'll use is a Gamma Katsu SC15. Uh, this hook has a short shank and a wide gape. You really don't want to go any smaller than size 4 because there's really limited real estate on this hook pattern and you won't have enough room to tie in all the materials. Okay, into the vise. Now I'm going to make a body from silver holographic tinsel and instead of tying it in with thread I've loaded the tinsel onto a bobbin and I'm going to attach it to the hook just as if it were tying thread. Just clip away the excess. Now I'm going to wrap that tinsel back to the bend of the hook. And I'm going to pause and untwist it as I go. Now I'll reverse direction and wind it back towards the eye. And I'll just untwist it a bit again. Now I'm going to put in a whip finish. Whoops, you'll do it better than that. Okay, there. There we are. off that. Now I'm going to attach the actual tying thread which is Danville's fine monofilament. Start right behind the eye and you've got to make sure to make eight or ten wraps before you cut that tag end off otherwise it'll come undone. Now to protect the To protect that tinsel, I'm going to overwrap it with the monofilament in a crisscross rib. And then just reverse the direction like that. I'm going to leave my thread about two widths back from the eye, and this will mark the back of the head. I'm going to add a throat which is made of this UV minnow belly. This material has a tendency to unwind itself and bend and kink. So I'm going to cut myself a little hank of it. Not very much. About that much. I'm going to treat it as if it was bucktail and then carefully remove any fibers which are broken or too long or too short. So I've ended up with about 10, 10 fibers, something like that. And I'm going to place those on the underside of the shank so the ends project about one hook length behind the bend. Now I'll pinch and wrap only about four or five turns, just enough to secure them, but not so much that I'm going to add a lot of bulk. I'll trim away the excess from the front at an angle. That 
looks about right. Now for the underwing, I'm going to use white bucktail. I'm going to select some hair from about halfway along the tail. I definitely don't want it from the base because it's just going to flare out too much. So you can see I'm not starting out with very much. I'm going to thin out this clump, taking away all the under fur or any hairs that don't lay straight. What I'm left with is about 15 or so hairs. I'm going to just set those down on my bench. I'm going to mix those with chartreuse angel hair. There's nothing angelic about this stuff. Uh, you know, if you're not careful, it just gets everywhere. So don't make the mistake of taking it out of the package. I only need about five or six strands. So I've just grabbed those out of the wrapper and I'm thinning them out until I've got what I need. That's about right. I'm going to just lay the angel hair down with my white bucktail and snip it roughly to the same length and then just mix them between my fingers. I want the overall length of the fly to be about two inches. So I'll tie those in with one fairly loose turn to start with and then four or five tighter turns. Right, and then I'll trim away the excess at as, just as shallow as an angle as I can. And then I'm going to wrap back to that two eye width point, which is going to mark the back of the head. Now I'll just get rid of that stray minnow belly fiber. Okay, that looks good. And now for the overwing, I'm going to take some light blue bucktail. And again, I'm going to thin this out until it's really very sparse. I don't want any of these shorter hairs. Those can go. Those ones. So again, about 15 hairs is all I want. So I've laid those down on my bench and I want to mix in some smolt blue crystal flash. I'm going to take two strands. And cut those in half to make four. I'll just take off some of that extra length. Now I'm going to lay them down and combine them with the blue calf tail. And just clip the flash to about the same length. Just mix it all together between my fingers. Just roll it around a bit. That looks good. Now I'll lay that bunch on top of the underwing so that it, it's of the same length. And one loose wrap and then some tighter ones just to secure it in position. Just lift up that front part and clip it away at a shallow angle. Now I'm going to make another seven or eight very tight wraps to lock everything in place. And then I'll come in with my whip finish tool.
like so. Cut off the mono. And then to finish this fly, I'm going to use a UV resin. Just need a thin coat over the entire head, that's all it needs. I'll give this a little cure. I'm going to take it out of the vise, just take a look, see if I need to do any adjustment. It just needs a little tidy up just back there. And that's it, the Kita Rose. I hope you can give this one a, a try. Thanks for watching and good luck.